Hello, everyone. This is Bobby Hacker, the Sports Shorts guy, your host for episode 25 of Sports Shorts. We're not having a guest today. We just wanted to provide a year in review of sorts and talk about a few things going on with the Sports Lawyers Association. First of all, a couple of years ago when we decided that we were going to be offering more content to our membership than just our annual conference, one of the things we launched was this program, Sports Shorts. So first of all, I'd like to thank Sam Renault for shepherding it through and starting this process. Unfortunately, he had to step away and I offered to help out on the first week he was out and 20, I don't know how many, 20 weeks later, here I am still doing it. And we'll be doing it for the foreseeable future. I think we've had some really good guests, not think, I know we've had really good guests and I hope you've enjoyed them. Um, from Howard Katz at the NFL talking about managing the schedule for the league to the CEO of Fox Sports, Eric Shanks, who will be back in the coming year. We had Tracy Lester Smith, the general counsel of NASCAR. Uh, always interesting and the smartest guy in the room, Professor Steve Ross. We had Maggie Carlisle, the general counsel of the Pac-12. Uh, and of course, former longtime SLA member, Stan Kasten, the president of the Dodgers, jumped in in the first of the Sports Shorts episodes that I did. So many thanks to Stan. We've had John Mealy, who's the financial advisor with Morgan Stanley, who is our platinum sponsor of our organization. So we've bought a lot of different things, lawyers, some non-lawyers, but the goal of this show, this little 30 minute bi-weekly show is to bring you people in the sports industry, sometimes lawyers, sometimes not, but those people that deal with issues that surround our practice. Now, when I talk about our practice, I think it's important that we look at two things. The first is what the vision statement is of the Sports Lawyers Association, which simply stated is to be the preeminent association for sports law. And one of the ways that we think we can do that, which we've been advancing in the last two years, is additional programming. So we've had sports shorts, series of webinars, we've had podcasts, and we will continue to do those things, but you can be assured that every other week at 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific, will be an episode of Sports Shorts. Now, one of the initiatives we have in this coming year of 2022 is a program we've called Time for Nine. And basically it's a celebration of the upcoming 50th anniversary of the Title IX legislation. That's June 23rd, 2022. As part of this program, we're going to have a series of events. We've had a couple already. We have another coming up in January, talking about the implications and the impact of Title IX. So please stay tuned, join these events. And in the event you can't join in an event, a live event, whether it's the sport shorts or one of our other things, you can always go to our YouTube, our, boy, that's a tongue twister, our YouTube channel, where you can find all of our archived programming. Now that YouTube channel is the sole source or the best source for finding that content. Uh, some of you may have discovered our SLA Live and we've decided after experimenting with it for a year or so that the best way to aggregate our content is on our YouTube channel. So please make sure to check it out, become a subscriber and you can find all this interesting content there. In the last year, another thing that's sort of a big change for our organization was the creation of what we call our next gen committee. And the next gen committee is made up of lawyers who've been in practice less than five years and law students. The decision to create that committee was in large part because the board thought that we needed to get better feedback and better input from younger lawyers as the board is, you know, obviously made up of seasoned sports law professionals. They've been meeting regularly once a month and they're working on a variety of projects. 
and everything from trying to create certain kinds of programming, which you will see down the road, to just helping us push forward with our social media presence. And we believe that the social media activation is a good way to reach out to our membership and to let people know of events that are upcoming. So there is some good to social media and we're trying to make the best of it. Part of the Sports Lawyers Organization, Sports Lawyers Association, is the fact that we are a nonprofit and we rely on membership and our sponsorships. So memberships are on an annual basis. For those of you that have been around for a while, it used to be on the anniversary of when you joined. But a couple of years ago, we moved to annual renewal. So it would be the end of the year and a good time to renew your membership. And all you have to do is go to sportslaw.org and sign up right there. It's worthwhile because not all of our content is available free, if you will. There is certain content which will include webinars and certain other kinds of live content that will be behind a paywall. That is, you have to be a member to, to see it. So I would hope that all of you are right now making yourself a note that you should go and renew before the end of the year. Tax savings, just a minor suggestion. And as we move forward, we have had an interesting two years. Certainly my two years as the president of the organization were challenging. And I think all of us have had a very challenging couple of years since COVID first locked us down and change the way we do so, so many things. Obviously, we have the new, our new friend, Mr. Omicron or Ms. Omicron or the Omicron variant, uh, the they variant, I'm not sure what we call it anymore. But that is challenging a lot of institutions. And I'm sure you're all aware that a lot of universities are going to remote learning for some period. Now that must be rough on the students. It must be rough on the faculty and obviously it's rough on the administrators and those kinds of decisions are not made lightly. Nevertheless, we are planning to have our annual conference in May, May 12 through 14 in Atlanta. Uh, uh, and just so you all understand, we select our venues generally two to three years in advance so we can secure the space. And I know there are those of you out there that will say, well, should we really be going to Atlanta? And I just wanna let you all know that this was a decision that was discussed by the executive committee of the SLA and by the entire board of our organization. And after a, I think a reasonably extensive discussion the board and the executive committee also, but decided that we should proceed with going to Atlanta, that the bottom line is we may call ourselves sports lawyers, but we're lawyers, we're officers of the court, and we can probably do, and we believe that we could do more good by showing up in Atlanta, and moving ahead with our conference and not injuring the people in Atlanta who would be most affected by the loss of uh, our, our association showing up. Uh, we hope to get some involvement with voting rights around our conference. And I think the bottom line is that the right to vote and the ability to vote are keystones of our democracy and we should support it in whatever way we can. And we'll be looking to do that when we're in Atlanta. So any of you SLA members in Atlanta that have ideas or suggestions, please reach out to us. We'd love to do something in that space. But I think one of the important things I also want to talk to you about is the mission statement of the Sports Lawyers Association. And that is to connect established and aspiring leaders in the sports law field and to elevate the expertise and reach of the profession. Now that's a, that's a mouthful for sure. But I think that first clause, 
or those first two words to connect. And that is really one of the key parts about the practice of law in general, and certainly in the sports law world. It's about connection. It's about relationships. And most of us, there are some that litigate within our sports law practice. 100% litigation and transactional worlds are quite different. But nevertheless, when you're working in the sports world, odds are that you're going to see people, deal with people more than one time. It's not one case. It's a continuing relationship. And part of what we want to do and what we have successfully done for over 40 years now is to connect people and build those relationships. Admittedly, not being able to do anything in person the last couple of years has been tough. It's been tough on all of us. But I know that I am so looking forward to seeing all of you in Atlanta in May. I know that our other board members feel the same way. And anecdotally, having spoken to so many of you, I know everybody's ready to get together and meet up. And hopefully we don't have to fist bump or elbow bump. Hopefully we can shake hands appropriately in the right circumstance, give a hug, but get back together and see one another and build the relationships that are so much a part of our organization. So that's sort of the year in review. Sport Shorts will continue. Stay tuned for more Title not, uh, Time for Nine events supporting the upcoming 50th anniversary of Title Nine. Start planning for your trip to the annual conference in Atlanta, May 12 to 14. Uh, and if you have any ideas for podcasts or webinars or guests on Sport Shorts, do not hesitate to reach out. If you want to reach out to me directly, very simply, you can find me at bobbyhacker at gmail.com. No caps, one word, B-O-B-B-Y-H-A-C-K-E-R. I'm always ready, willing, and in, enjoy speaking with all of you. So as I sign off for 2021, I want to wish all of you a very, very happy new year and health to each of you, to your families, to our country, to the world, and let's get through this and not have to deal with any additional letters in the Greek alphabet. So thank you all for joining. Thank you for being a part of our SLA family. And thank you for tuning into Sports Shorts every other Tuesday, 5.30 Eastern, 2.30 Pacific. Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs>